All right, my friends, we're going to go ahead and start talking about 2025 AEP disruptions and overall, what is the market, what kind of changes are we going to experience within our market? Now, I'll start off by saying this, all of the changes that we are going to discuss today is resulting in what is expected to be up to a 70% shopping rate come October 1st. So 70% of beneficiaries over the age of 65 are expected to actually look and reevaluate their benefits. That is up on five times the amount between what is normally in past years, right. 12 to 15% shopping rates. So this is the time of year where your clients, I know we work with so many agents that say, say my clients know to call me, my clients know to work with me. Imagine five times the amount of people yeah. asking questions, of people being confused, of clients talking to other clients. And so making sure you understand this is the year, like Matt said earlier, where you could lose 70% of your business or you could grow your business exponentially, just depending on how well prepared you are for this. Absolutely. So let's jump into what exactly we're going to talk about today. We're going to go into each one of these much more in depth, but just going to outline to you <sighs> what is causing this 70 percent shopping rate yeah so i think probably the one that gets the most buzz is the inflation reduction act mm -hmm. um that's been phasing in over the last couple of years now mm -hmm. but this year was like the big ticket item when it first passed which was the two thousand dollar cost cap on the part d drug so this is the the closing of the donut hole that we've been hearing about for several years well 2025 is when that goes into effect for those who don't know but i'm guessing most of you have heard lots but yeah, $2,000 moop on Part D drugs. So uh, what that means is that it's approximately three times the cost burden that's going to be landing on carriers uh, for this coming year. So in past years, um, you know, they've had to share some of that burden, obviously. You know, there's been the catastrophic coverage phase, mm -hmm. but then clients have paid during the coverage gap. Now all of that burden shifts to the carriers way, way, way faster. So again, anticipating about three times as much money they're going to have to spend on that. Well, and again, on paper for a client, <laughs> you say like, you're not going to pay more than $2,000 on paper to a client and like in an election year, that sounds amazing, yeah. you know, not to throw that out there, but that sounds like a great, but the, what happens, the cascade of what that costs, because carrier, these are for-profit companies. They're not going to eat those yeah. costs. So those, right. those that has to be made up somewhere. Yeah. And uh, you know, we're anticipating a lot of that is going to really hit the drug plans a lot harder than the MAPD plans. Mm -hmm. um, just a lot less areas uh, where they can play with those benefits. You know, an MA plan has all these ancillary benefits. They've got a lot of things they can do um, mm -hmm. uh, with the health conditions where they can get, um, I'm blanking on the word now like, for the different diagnosis where they get more money. The word is escaping. Diagnostic related groups is the only thing I know. I'm blanking on the word, but yeah. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, a lot less ability that a uh, PDP plan is going to be able to do that. So definitely thinking mm -hmm. that's going to result in pretty significant premium increases there. The other piece of the Inflation Reduction Act that I feel like is not being talked about near as much is the smoothing provision, mm -hmm. which honestly may be a bigger impact on like what a the client's consumer. actually going to, yeah, the, the consumer is going to see and feel. So what that smoothing provision says is that for your clients who have uh, higher cost drugs, they wanted to have the ability for them to spread that cost out over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, again, a, a core component of the Inflation Reduction Act to say, if you've got a, you know, let's say $5,000 drug, instead of having to pay up front, you can spread that cost out over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, a client can opt into that at any point. Uh, and what that will mean is that they are no longer paying for those drugs at the counter. Instead, they're financing it through the carrier. Mm -hmm. So that's going to create a big administrative burden on a lot of sides. Yeah. Confusion at the pharmacy counter, um, confusion by clients on how to enroll into that, because again, it's not an automatic thing, <clears throat> excuse me, something clients are going to have to choose to opt into. And then more administrative burden on the carriers, because now the carriers are essentially going to have to be a mm -hmm. credit union, right? Like oh, yeah. they're loaning money to the clients to do this, which means they're going to have to find a way to bill separately, manage, track all of that. Clients are going to be paying you know, multiple bills a month that are going to look different on this um, and potentially could create a situation for clients to be behind on payments and potentially have termination of their plans if mm -hmm. they're not paying correctly on that. So tons of... yeah turbulence the term that. there that everybody keeps saying is that carriers are now having to take on bad debt and having to work in an administrative way that they've not had to before especially people who are not used if they're on a medicare advantage plan 
who is not used to receiving, receiving bills from the carriers yeah. directly, that's going to be a major significant change to them. And again, going to the counter, not having to pay there. You know how many times your clients will say, just bill me later? That's like, I don't want to pay money now. I'll pay for it later. And how many times that's going to confuse a pharmacist this year when exactly. they're like, no, 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 no. I have a bill here. Like, you think that, that mm -hmm. pharmacists are going to be educated on that or they're going to have any clue. They're going to be totally confused yes. come January. Mass confusion yeah. at the pharmacy counter. Now, keep in mind, there is a time when, and, and I can see, I can follow the math, follow the progress of saying like, if I know there's a $2,000 map, instead of having to pay $5,000 in a month or you know $2,000 in a month, how do I space that over a year? I understand that completely. But understanding that they can do this with any medication, yeah. not just the big ticket ones. Right. This is going to be huge this year because, again, like Matt hit on, with PDP plans not being able to, we'll say, be creative with their accounting. We're not; They're not going to be able to. If they're going to have to eat the majority of the drug costs this year, more than they ever have, that comes two places, premium yep. and formularies. Yeah. So whenever, so when again, people are going to the counter, going to this, a drug that maybe cost them a higher end drug that maybe cost them $100, $150 in 2024 could cost thousands or could be off formulary. Completely We've talked about also formulary. that you know, the brands are probably, there's a good chance again, in some of these formulary changes, a few things we think we will see increased cost sharing across those formularies. Mm -hmm. So probably higher dollar amounts in each of those That's tiers. <laughs> yeah. This is really uh, aggressive. And increases. then also potentially eliminating <laughs> drugs from the formulary. So mm -hmm. where, you know, it, where a lot of drugs may have had five different brand names for a particular, you know, medication, think, you know, some of the diabetes or mm -hmm. high blood pressure medications, mm -hmm that may be significantly slimmed down on a lot of the plans, especially some of the lower premium plans, there's gonna have to be some give and take. And that's an area where we think we could definitely see that, where it's gonna be a much more narrow formulary to specific brands, mm -hmm. especially if they're trying to keep premiums down. And premiums, I know you've got some data that was shared with us on that. Exactly. So right now, the national average of a premium is around, has been for the last several years, hovering around that 34, yeah. uh, anywhere between 33 to 35 over the last few years. This year, they're expected to take those premium rate increases, the average being up to $75. They're saying $65 to $75. Yeah. So again, not only will we most likely see less drugs on the formulary and a person being able to use their drug plan less, but it's likely that if they even get one just to avoid the premiums or just to avoid that penalty, it's likely that you're going to see higher plans than what we've ever seen before. Right. So one stat that was shared with us is, you know, the max amount that a plan is allowed to change or degrade their benefits mm -hmm. from year to year. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, all of the plans are measured on a value on a per member per month basis compared to original Medicare. Mm -hmm. So the max amount that a plan is allowed to degrade like by, by CMS is $38 PM PM in one year. Per member per month. Per member per month in one year. If you think about an MAPD plan, again, there's a lot of different levers they can pull. They can move mm -hmm. the health maximum out of pocket on that. Mm -hmm. They can add, you know, higher co-pays. They can change networks. You know, they can cut back dental, ancillary benefits, all those things. A PDP plan just doesn't have very many levers to pull with mm -hmm. that, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, Formulary, premium, cost sharing. Mm -hmm. That's that's about all they've got there. So again, we're expecting those costs to really be passed through on the premiums much heavier than what we're expecting to see on MA plans. On MA, well, I think, one oh, thing I want to say yeah, about yeah. drug plans is because again, because the carriers have to compensate. <clears throat> one of the ways they can compensate that can be your commissions. So be on the lookout this year that several Medicare Advantage plans are, excuse me, several prescription drug plan companies are looking at the option of not paying commissions on, on those plans. Yep. So keep that in mind as well. A um, couple of questions we do have here about that. Um, Brian says, first of all, the legit question, which thank you for starting that out with, isn't the maximum out of pocket for drugs going up to $2,000? So yes, yes, it is. Correct. That is the maximum amount that a person is going to pay on their prescriptions this year. But keep in mind, because of that, that's why a lot of these higher dollar medications may end up off formulary. Yep. So you finding alternative ways to pay for, pay for prescriptions. prescriptions, such as mini meds, <laughs> Clever RX, things like that, finding uh, Canada Care, finding you know Canadian medications, alternative methods for paying for those medications will be more of a topic than what we've seen. And keep in mind, like how you're gonna have to do a much more comprehensive review than probably in past years, where you know premium savings is only gonna be one measure that you're looking at. There, mm -hmm. you've got to make sure those drugs are covered, uh, or yeah, they'll be maxing out that two. They could, Every formula. A, a lot of them it. could max out that two thousand dollar move. Absolutely. Very, very quickly yeah. on things. So really having to look 
close at everything. Go ahead. I know you're kind of starting to talk about some of the Medicare Advantage stuff. Yeah. So on on MAPD, um, like I said, there's a lot more things an, an MA plan can do to offset that uh, you know expected burden from the uh, the two thousand dollar cost cap. Um, on an MA plan, again, they can change a lot more. So what we're expecting is probably a larger variety of plans than what we've seen in past years. Mm -hmm. um, potentially not a change to premium. We think that's probably the last thing a carrier is going to try to do. So I, I don't think we're going to mm -hmm. you know, have zero premium plans disappear. I know I've seen some things online where people have said that. Everything we're seeing is that that's probably not going to be the case. Maybe some, but by and large, it's going to be those other benefits. So mm -hmm. definitely some of those ancillary benefits. Um, another thing that we have, have seen a lot of, um, I guess, discussion about is footprints on those MA plans as well. That if you're in kind of a fringe county to a metropolitan area right now that's getting the same benefits as like the heart of the city, some of those counties might be under scrutiny for that because typically the farther you get away from higher populated areas, the more expensive that care is to provide. Uh, and if they're not getting enough coming back in on that, we, we could see plans exiting counties for that and potentially having narrower footprints in some of those more profitable counties. Um, again, when we talk about variety of plans, I think a lot of carriers we could see segmenting the market and mm -hmm. having a you know zero premium plan with higher cost sharing, mm -hmm. maybe offering some lower premium options that will have less cost sharing, uh, or maybe some of those ancillary benefits added back in there. But I mean, I think the days of you know the zero premium plan that you know stacks up in every single measurable cost mm -hmm. share and huge ancillary benefits, like that's going to be really really tough to do, especially with any sizable network yeah. and footprint. Uh, with some of these changes that are happening. I, I, I know carriers are telling us this will be the largest year-over-year -year change we've seen in benefits potentially ever, but mm -hmm. definitely in 10, 15 years. Yeah, especially those attention-grabbing benefits, because it's always fun when they've had to adjust costs. They always say those are secondary benefits. If it's not on your card, <clears throat> we're going to try to change other things so that we still look appealing to the eye. Keep in mind, one of the biggest areas where carriers are talking about cutting back significantly is going to be those Part B rebates, those Part B give back plans, which are really appealing to a lot of people of getting less money taken out of their Social Security. And that's because those are 100% utilization. No other benefit is used 100% of the time. So those are going to be some of the most costly plans to have to come through. So what does this mean? This right here is the primary reason of why they are expecting a 70% shopping rate this year. And the thing that you have to know as an agent is that none of your clients are safe. Their formularies are gonna change, their benefits are going yep. to change, what's available to them is going to change. So in most years <laughs> when we can say, hey, your plan looks great, you don't need to move unless there is a major change in your medicine or a major change in provider, will not be the case this year because even if their medicines didn't change the formulary and the benefits likely did um some other questions i wanted to get here um i think sms i would think sms would have flyers to hand out to pharmacists about this terry yes so right now we currently have letters that are like handouts for pharmacists to say here's what the pdp levels look like obviously that's going to look really different this year so we will um have flyers for you to give to your pharmacist that explain the IRA, the $2,000 move, and um, the smoothing especially. Another question, um, hopefully you will tell us what to talk about before October. Yes, Scott, we will tell you what to do. Um, for the So the four stages of drugs will be uh, totally eliminated. Deductible, initial, gap, catastrophic. Oh, gap. The gap, gap will yeah. be eliminated. Yeah. Um, deductible will still be there. And Deductibles are going to be higher and probably on every plan. Exactly. And like plans that you used to see, like only the deductible is going to be in tiers three through five. That very well may not it be the case. Again, the case. all of this is, you know, nothing, nothing mm -hmm. is certain on that. But yes, probably changing a lot. Um, but LEP, late enrollment penalty, will be higher. Yeah, if the because the late enrollment penalty is based on the national average. Yeah. If the national average doubles, so will that late enrollment penalty. Um, some are saying this is the most devastating year since 2016 when PDP went to effect, Margaret. It's the most changed year. Most change, most opportunity. So yeah. you guys, the ones who are sitting here on this website or this webinar, if you start planning now and we'll get to like the solving, well, we're telling you the problems. We're gonna also tell you how to fix yes. it. Yes, we're on slide one. We're on We've slide got one. Many. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, you guys will be in a, in, a, in a better scenario to say, here's how we're going to capture that 70% shopping versus losing your own clients. So devastating is not the word I would use. 
opportunity is yeah. where I would go. Yeah. Um, when the formularies not come out before October, they never do. Yeah, usually formularies are last minute. We will, yeah. Um, we'll talk more about other things that are going to be last minute this year. Well, when the flyers be available, as soon as we get them done, we will we will make sure you know. Again, we have to be careful because keep in mind, it is not compliant to talk about 2025 plans or benefits prior to October 1st. So we have to be careful about when we're making 2025 information available because you cannot be specific on those things. Um, will any of this be on the AHIP test this year? Not this stuff, yeah, I imagine I smoothing will, smoothing 100% yeah, will. I'm sure some of the IRA will as well. Um, is SMS creating a new webinar on this? Is it? it is, yeah. Is it the webinar? Um, if you're interested in, in a client facing stuff, we'll get to that here yep. in a little bit. Yep. <laughs> um, I should have said seminar for client approval. Seminar. Yep. We're, we're getting yep, to that. Getting to that. Cool. Okay. okay let's Inflation keep Reduction Act. This is the major that's one, reason. That's one thing. Yes. Not what, the only. This is what a lot of clients are going to be looking at and why you'll have to talk to every single client this year. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about um, how this affects prepping yeah. this year. And that is going to be um, the rebid process. So why don't you, you've done a lot of work. With yeah. Carriers so a couple things to think of. Um, first and foremost, on top of everything going on with the Inflation Reduction Act, um, we also saw another funding cut from CMS that's coming to the plans this year. So last year we saw a funding cut, this year we're seeing another funding cut after I think it was like four or five straight years of mm -hmm. increases. Most of those years like four to five percent increases. Mm -hmm. Now we've had two straight years of cuts. So keep in mind there's more money the carriers are having to pay out the door and less money coming in the door. So yet another factor against them mm -hmm. as far as what the process looks like for carriers. So June 3rd, is their deadline to be able to actually get their benefits turned into CMS. So there's not a lot of time for carriers to make adjustments or do these. And a lot of this information is you know, pretty fluid, I feel like, with carriers. So keep that in mind that they don't have a ton of time to react to that. So carriers are going to be trying to file to the best of their ability what they feel like they can do by June 3rd. All of this included, <clears throat> like, yes, yeah, sorry, Correct. go ahead. And, and those are the benefits that we will typically see on sneak peeks is what is filed mm -hmm. with CMS. In a given year, we usually see, so let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit there. So they file that, those are the benefits we usually see on sneak peeks. And then around August, usually mid-August, CMS comes back with rebid, which means that they look at that plan and they say, this is what we feel the approximate PM, PM value of this plan is. And we feel it will will be or will not be able to be profitable here. And then based on that, they will tell that carrier, here's how much we need to, you to change your bid by as far as a per member per month dollar amount. Sometimes that's higher, sometimes that's lower, just depending on how that carrier based their benefits versus what CMS feels is the baseline will be that year. Mm -hmm. So that's why we typically see like, again, mid-August, you guys will see the final benefits typically come out from carriers and they vary a little bit from what you see on sneak peeks. In a typical year, that is a few dollars per member per month that we see that. Mm -hmm. Last year, I'll use United Healthcare as an example. They held their sneak peeks and waited until they had their rebid. Um, so we didn't get sneak peeks until mid-August last year, if you guys remember that. And it was because they were freaking out because the rebid amount was, I believe it was like $10 or $12, it was like 10 to 12, yeah. which was a very high amount compared to past years. This year, a lot of people think those rebids could be upwards of 50 some saying as much as a hundred dollars difference in rebid because the carrier five dollars okay i haven't even heard that yeah, number yeah 145 dollars is what um one of the, the <laughs> actuaries were saying it could be in some could cases. be off by that much and that could be again one direction or the other depending well, on was, how someone the, um the the scale they gave us it could be um a deviation of 15 so give or 15 oh, give yeah, or yeah. Take, yeah it was give or take 15 dollars anywhere from $15 to $130. Yeah. So anyways, go yeah. ahead, sorry. Uh, all of that to say, like if you see us like, you know, ugh, doing this, all of that to say that what you see on sneak peeks is probably not going, is probably going to be the most different from what the final benefits will look like that anyone has ever seen. Those, I think what you can really get from sneak peeks this year is probably going to be more things like footprint changes and actual plan like reductions, like if a plan is no longer there mm -hmm. or a plan is but being crosswalked or whatever term you want to use, mapped into a different mm -hmm. uh, H number. I think that's really what the takeaways will be from sneak peeks this year is what plans are even going to be in my county? Mm -hmm. um, you know, are there going to be major changes, new plans, plan exits, crosswalks, things like that? 
the actual benefits, I would not put very much weight into during that time period. Because again, they're making those decisions in the next two weeks. And then that's what they're going to have to live with until they find out that number in August. So there's going to be a massive change in benefits we're expecting to see. Yeah. So again, don't put a ton of weight in those sneak peeks other than those few things, like yeah. I said. Look Where at, do they want to be? Yep. Where do they want to be? Are they even going to be there? And honestly, that's about all they can tell you. Yeah, that's really what it will will spell, I think. So in years past, what we did <laughs> um, for AEP prep, right? Because AEP prep usually starts June for its early birds, July kind of, and, and into August. And a big part of that was looking at the sneak peeks and being like, who do I think I'm going to write a lot of? What clients do I think I'm going to see? I wrote a ton yep. of that now this year. I think United Healthcare is going to have a big year. Who? How many appointments am going to have to fit? You the, the picking what carrier you were going to write the is most gonna of. Win is going to be a crapshoot until 10-1 because, oh, sorry, I kind of cut no, you off there. Go no, ahead. and to that, it is until 10-1. And even with that, yeah. knowing um, that the plans are going to be so much variance. So even after 10-1, when we know, okay, it looks like plan ABC is the one that's going to write where value add may be completely different because it's not just going to be zero dollars right. with zero benefit or with great benefits this year because i mean years past it's kind of been a race to the, to the finish I the think, race to the end i think that's one of the big takeaways is yes. the variance in plans. the variance so even if you say like oh it used to be this plan's obvious the obvious choice there even once we see 10-1 there will not be an obvious choice this year so your AEP prep isn't what carriers do I even need to look or worry about. It's going to be look at your shelf and we're going to talk about like what to do, but I really want to focus on this. There is not a carrier you can afford to not pick up this year. The regional ones you have to have, the big ones you have to have. We just won't know. We you And if you try to certify and contract with a carrier end of September, October 1, you will not be prepared and you will lose business. You yeah. cannot afford to not be ready to write that carrier come October 1 even. Yeah, I think that that point there about the variance in the plans, like, you know, when we say we won't know what plans look like until 10-1, we will see what the plans look like prior, but you won't be able to really understand probably who's going to be the most competitive. Mm -hmm. Because as Olivia said, in, in mm -hmm. years past, tell me if this sounds familiar to anyone, you'll have three or four plans in your market that are all zero premium, that all have very similar networks, mm -hmm. that all have zero PCPs, that all have MOOPs within a few hundred dollars of each other. And it's kind of like, yeah, they're all pretty close, but this one's the best. It, it could be totally wild, nothing looking the same. So mm -hmm. even if you see those benefits, you just won't know how to digest Comparing them. Comparing them yep. will not, it will not exist. So you're going to have to be ready with everything. Yeah. So call us. So we'll yep. get you set up with everything. And, think, and of course. And now we move into like, hopefully some more positive. Some like more positive. Some, some what you can do well, with it. Well, well, what <laughs> I thought. We got one more. What's impacting the market slide? Oh, yeah, yeah. Final rules next. Isn't it? We're going to be talking about yeah. the final rule. And notice that, like, we all thought, like, final rule was going to be the big thing this year. We're very wrong. It is a big thing, just not compare it in comparison to everything else. So, number one with the final rule, obvious what got the most attention, and that was funding, right? So, we do know that commissions increased $100 yep, on Medicare Advantage, value. $50 on um, PDPs, and of course, you know, how we know with renewals and things like that. And that is the intention oh, of... So slides are not changing. <gasps> I paused it. What did you do? I didn't do that. So here's the slide you missed so far. And I can send out these slides. Yes. Yeah. So you guys haven't, there's not a lot of information on it's here. It's mostly just what we're... It's just our talk. Yeah, it's just us to keep yapping. us, it's us to keep us on point. But I can send out these as well. This last slide talking about the final rule, again, expecting less less funding from the carriers. What carriers have really transitioned to is saying, you know, as far as how your FMO or your upline gives you dollars or how the carrier gives you dollars, a lot of times has been on a per app basis. If you, you know, an extra, that's why like HSAs, VBEs, all those like extra funding comes from. CMS basically said, since we're giving you a pay raise on commissions, you cannot receive any dollars outside on a per app basis outside of the commissions for this plan so the big thing that comes down to is what we've been telling agents to do for years when it comes to events sales meetings a knock meetings all these things are going to be more important than ever you are not going to have the capability of having carriers fund those for you so understanding that not only are you not going to receive if your fmo if you chose your fmo based on 
marketing dollars based on the levels of commissions that you receive when it comes to MA and PVP. If you chose them because of the financial services they provide you, your legs are getting cut from under you because they will no longer be able to give you those dollar amounts on a on per app basis. basis. Yes. Yeah. So understanding this year, how are you going to fund your marketing? A year where marketing and communications is more important than ever, you'll need to think about now, how do you fund your own activities for this when you may not have had to in the past? Yes. And to couple that, uh, there was also a piece that was reiterated in the final rule. So it shouldn't have been news there. It was originally an FCC ruling back in the fall mm -hmm. that was reiterated in the final ruling. Um, a term that you may hear thrown around is one-to-one -one consent mm -hmm. uh, that is really changing the way lead distribution is going to work. There was a little kind of hint of things brought up with that last year, and then like all the teeth were put in it this year. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that for a consumer, a beneficiary, for any lead or advertisement or anything that they are doing to initiate someone reaching out to them about benefits, or and this is again, it was an FCC ruling, so it's leads in general. Does anybody else go to... And the FCC won't let me be uh, M&M. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, again, this is an FCC ruling though, so it's all industries, but CMS reiterated it that yes, it applies specifically to what we do. When a beneficiary is clicking on something or again, in some way, shape or form opting in, they have the right to know what they are opting into and who specifically is going to be reaching out to them. So the days of the black and white, you know, Medicare changes and it just goes to someone are no longer going to be the case. So it will have to be, again, one-to-one, -one, meaning one person opting in to have one person reach out to them. Leads cannot be resold and leads cannot be generic, meaning they just say, I'm going to receive information on Medicare changes and then a lead vendor sells that to Olivia or me. Instead, it would have to be, I'm reaching out about Medicare changes to hear from Olivia and that is sold only to Olivia. Mm -hmm. This goes into effect, it's 10-1, I'm almost yes, positive yes. is the date on that. Uh, so what this will mean on lead generation for you guys is in the short term, lead costs are probably going to be going up quite significantly because everything is going to have to be campaign based. Mm -hmm. You're paying for a specific lead campaign that is tied to you. That's customized. It has to have your name and, you know, it has to have your title, your name, all of that yep. on there. And I know we're trying to get clarification. It's still a little bit uh, fuzzy on how far like an agency name will go versus a specific agent. So for example, if you're an agency with four or five agents there, mm -hmm. can it be advertising your ABC insurance agency and then any of the five of you can work it or does it have to advertise specific agents? There's still some clarity coming there. Mm -hmm. I know some of the belief right now is that 1099 agents in particular might not be able to be included in that agency title. A W-2 employee potentially could, but that's mm -hmm. still kind of up, yeah, up for discussion exactly. on that side of things. So again, planning ahead, campaign-based leads, you know, the days of being able to go on and buy a live lead that you had not prior planned beforehand is not going to happen. Anything you do will have to be tied to you. Again, mm -hmm. it'll have to say your name, so mm -hmm. it will have to be a campaign that has been running ahead of time. Now, Margaret asked the question that this is only for PDPs and MAPDs, right? The thing is, is we all know, I understand why you think that, because CMS does not regulate <laughs> Medicare supplement. They regulate the anything that's federally ran, which is C&D. This is not a CMS regulation. CMS came out and said, yes, it applies to us, but this is an FC, F -E -C. F FCC. FCC, thank you. This is an FCC, which I think Chaylin, our compliance officer for MMG, he said it perfectly, is that the FCC has sharper teeth, meaning that they can actually fine you up to... It's, no, civil, civil suit. Civil so it's, suit, it's, it's, excuse it's me, a, yeah. So whoever the person is whose information opted in, and mm -hmm. if it was not by the book with this one-to-one -one consent, mm -hmm. They can civilly sue you for violating that. And I should know the number Jalen just talked about yesterday. I want to say it was six thousand. It was six thousand. It was six thousand dollars per violation. Maybe I'm off on that. And Don't it's not per client, dollar. it's per call yeah. to that. So it's again with a with or CMS a, doesn't have the teeth to do that. They don't, they don't they, have, they, have, yeah. they have no ability to fine or charge money or anything to that effect. Exactly. In fact, CMS goes through the carriers to do Correct. all their policing. Yeah. This is they can the, pull a license is about as bad as it would get. Exactly. This yep. is the FCC. So it's not just like a, okay, I can continue to do my stuff. No, this is all lead generation, all communication, all prospecting yep. is being looked at at this way. And I'm going to throw an extra piece in there also of like, it. it's also an election year. So mm -hmm. all mass communication is going to be significantly more expensive than a normal year. 
So your uh, newspaper ads, TV ads, radio ads, um, digital ads, all of that stuff is being bought up at a much higher rate than a typical year. In fact, many of our carriers I know will tell us they purchase less, sometimes no marketing mm -hmm. during election seasons yeah. because it's so expensive. It does, yeah, so, and I, I, I know we're kind of getting some of the stuff later, but it will definitely mean wanting to think ahead and purchase like today if you're wanting to run ads during AEP because the costs are just going to skyrocket. Yeah. And it's and again, keep in mind, guys, the burden of proof is not on the, v, the lead vendor. It's on you. So if you can't just say, well, I got it through this guy, I got it through this really reputable company, so it must be compliant, it must be legit, that doesn't mean anything. Um, the burden of is on you. You have to make sure you're vetting your carrier. So making sure you're using really reputable, not even reputable, just asking the right questions. Obviously, Integrity offers Lead Center, which has been doing customized campaigns and has been working on this yep. since January or since the end of December when the final ruling came out. Um, so understanding that, that if you're gonna again we'll talk about solutions but we have them yes. don't worry um will these changes for clients impact dsnip and csnip yeah. it will um dsnip especially because the dsnip scp we're not talking about that today but just because you're asking about it the dsnip uh there or the dsnip scp is changing in 2025 right now the dsnip is if you're eligible for medicare quarterly. or medicaid you have a quarterly ability to enroll in a new plan it's going to change basically to like a five-star situation to where during um if you are not currently enrolled in a dual special needs plan but you qualify for one you have one election to enroll in that so and that's for each year Yes. Or ones that are ran by state Medicaid-based plans right. that are integrated care, which exactly. we're going to see more of. Exactly. But that's not a, a today. Can of not words. a today problem. Yeah. Yeah. Margaret, I'm going to answer your question mm -hmm. at the end. Okay. So we've talked about Did the slide change for everyone. It looks like it. Yes. Sure. So we've talked about <laughs> all the things that are going to. We're going to say I'm going to change my mindset now. All the things that are going to cause wonderful opportunity come this AEP. Now, and I'm going to say, you're not going to, you know, in other years when there's huge opportunity, it's kind of easy to like fall into it, yeah. right? Like you're going to write a huge amount because a carrier is pulling in, a carrier right. is pulling out, whatever the case may be. 10 times the amount of business is going to cause 10 times the amount of work this year. You are, is going to be hard, but you can help a lot of people and make a lot of money doing it in a year where people are desperate for help and desperate for, for input. So these are things that we can be, that we're telling you to do now in order to where October 1st comes around, you're ready to rock and roll and you're just stepping into an AEP that's gonna be a wild ride. So number one, certify with everything early because regardless of how prepared, it happens every year on a normal year, yep. but every single year we get a come October 1st or 2nd, we get a flood of Somebody agents. Come, some plane comes out of nowhere that they nowhere. didn't have. Exactly. Yeah. And you're trying to contract, you're trying to certify while also working through AEP. So that will still happen. There'll be some carrier that like was not on anybody's radar, but get certified with everything. This is us telling you, there will be that carrier. There will, there be, will be carriers carrier. that come out of nowhere, probably multiple. Yes. Be prepared now. Yes. So um, understanding that carriers are already, the big ones are already announcing when those certifications are happening starting next month. Do it now, do it early, yep. get to know them. Um, get your tech systems and processes down, particularly um, we always say with Medicare Center. So Medicare Center, if you guys are unaware, is a quoting enrollment platform that uses CRM capabilities, also links in with Lead Center, so where your leads can automatically feed into this. It's an incredible tool, an incredible process, call, call recording the whole nine yards. This year, Medicare Center has investing heavily yes. into the consumer facing portion of their platform so not only like there's some really cool stuff happening on the consumer facing stuff where it's like they'll have a wallet that they can use to like store their carrier information their cards things like that um, but it also is giving the opportunity for care for, for our clients to actually upload not only again you'll continue to be able to shop and enroll themselves they can do that now on your personal agent website but it's giving them the ability to actually upload their own medication so that you can basically say hey create this username create this log line, upload or customize it with your providers your drugs everything and then your crm also gets updated with yep. that so during the appointment you're going to have to learn how to take your appointments for aep because you have to meet so many more people you have to either eliminate the appointment your pdp appointments it's going to be really hard to justify spending time on a pdp appointment 
send them here yeah and they can shop and roll your agent of record you don't aren't spending your time collecting the data you are spending your time on true money making activities i think that's one of probably the biggest takeaways mm -hmm. to have from this entire webinar is that technology change with everything there yes. has the potential to save you huge amounts of time that you are so going much. to have to have this year if mm -hmm. you want to win especially if you're someone with a large block of clients if you're 500 a thousand more clients you will not have the time to sit down with mm -hmm. every appointment or with every client face to face and run a you know say one hour appointment you are mm -hmm. going to have to have something like this to streamline your time and I say systems and processes. So one thing, the next one is learn how to do bulk appointments. Yep. That's going to be huge this year. So if you <laughs> haven't done them before, we see a lot of agents um, with larger book of business streamline their AEP because between October 1st through October 14th, they do these ANOC meetings. And what these ANOC meetings are, are you gather everybody up on a plan. Like if I, you have a ton of people on your Aetna plan this yep. year, gather and-, and Hypothetically, Aetna Smart Fit plan. Maybe, right? You would send out an invitation to anybody on this Aetna plan and say, hey, bring your friends, bring other people who are currently on this plan or are interested in this plan. It's a registered sales event, a registered formal sales event, and you go over the ANOC with them and tell them how their plan is going to look different in 2025. Now, you can't do that until after October 1st, <laughs> right? So you do that, and then that way you're having mass appointments, so you're not spending appointments on a one-on-one -on -one basis going over how their current plan is going to look different. So. As we know with that, what a great way to do that is have those ANOC meetings and then send out that link and allow people to shop for themselves. Or of course, have those shorter version, 30 minute Medicare or, or quick over phone, the phone call quick phone appointments because you're can. not spending your time going over their current coverage. Yeah. You're doing that on a mass basis, or, wildly helpful. Or even a phone appointment and then send that link. Yo, you can give the, so have them at an ANOC meeting, mm -hmm. you get a hundred butts in seats to hear the changes, say, mm -hmm. we'll do a 15 minute review, yes. explain what they need and say, I'm going to send you a link yes. to do your enrollment so that you can move on to the next person exactly. there. Exactly. Might be necessary for a lot of agents. It will, you're going to have to find a way. What The way that I word it is you're gonna have to find the way to eliminate your customer service without eliminating your customer experience. That's so amazing. not having your one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, having it in a package deal, and then putting it on them to enroll themselves. Now obviously, your 85-year-old clients, that's probably not gonna work right. for them. But the baby boomers um, will, um, from eight key accounts, give some interesting statistics that like 80% of people at like the age of 65 have a smartphone yeah. and are hungry for, for using this technology. So giving them the capability. I think a good, uh, for instance, of that is for any of you who are on group insurance or have done group insurance mm -hmm. lately, like all with ours, everything is done yes. online. Yes. We never sit with a person. Yes. We watch a large web meeting together. Mm -hmm. We do our own enrollments online there. When we do our property and casualty insurance, yes. all of that's online, we get digital cards. So keep that in mind that just because you always have mm -hmm. sat down with a client and felt you have to do face-to-face, -face, especially for your 65 to 70 year old clients, yes. just because you have always done it doesn't mean that's the only way that they're comfortable buying. Exactly. They have probably bought 90% of other things in their life the last couple of years through this type of system. It is totally okay for you to make that change and do that so that you can service as many clients as humanly possible exactly. because you will not be able to do it. You will, you'll probably be hurting some clients by trying to take hour long appointments to help others. By doing that, you're going to be hurting other clients that you can't see and can't work with. And you're not going to grow again. Like 70% <clears throat> of people are going somewhere. They're going to be going somewhere. Hopefully your clients on the best case scenario, your clients are going to stay with you. That's best case scenario on that. Ma let's they, make sure they can't hear from you they won't exactly exactly <laughs> yeah. um nobody is safe so yeah. making sure you're doing things like that learning those book appointments yes we will we will be having trainings on anox we will be providing videos on like how to teach your clients how to read their anox we will be providing um a ton of resources it's coming like out full court press over here it right is. now on resources yes this we're, this is us just telling you about it our teams have been working in the past few weeks because this is a lot of this was news to us and we'll be continuing for between now and the end of the year yep. helping you streamline your AEP because you cannot afford to chase PDP business this year. Now I do again I don't want to get off too much off subject here. You do have to continue to write PDP. I'm a strong believer in that. Um, PDPs are the one plan that your clients are almost guaranteed to use on a monthly basis. They're the best way to help you judge your client's health. They're the best way to save your client money and to be and to reinvest that premium. So you have to be their agent of record for PDP. You do not have to spend the time 
on PDP this year? I think a good uh, number for every agent, I would recommend all of you guys do this math, is figure out how many appointments you can actually see during AEP and then compare that to how many clients you have. Mm -hmm. For example, if you see one hour appointments, eight appointments a day, every business day during AEP, that is 280 appointments that you can run. Mm -hmm. I think most of you would call eight appointments hour long a pretty full day, right? If you can't find a way to shorten that, you now know the limit. You can see 280 people. If you've got 500 clients, that means half of your clients aren't gonna see you that year. If you've got 250 clients, that means you only have time to potentially grow by 30 clients. Mm -hmm. So any way you can shorten those down, I mean, I, I guess every minute counts is what I would kind of say with this right now. That is that is the, the method I would employ is every minute counts. I would also encourage those of you who have any licensed staff or other agents in your office to find ways where you can have them conducting um, uh, reviews with your clients so that you can focus on new client intakes mm -hmm. or maybe you know a few more high need clients that you may have, but mm -hmm. like trying to duplicate yourself so that your clients are not only having to meet with you because that will be a limiting yeah. factor this year. Now, just keep in mind, if you are gonna have your admin staff going over plan changes, going over benefits, they do have to be licensed, licensed yep. and contracted sure. for that. Um, but that is, again, will help you with There's that. time. There is there's time. time. That's why we're talking about this that, now. There's time for them to get exactly. licensed. Exactly. Yes. So huge. There is, again, there is so much we can be doing to make sure you're able to take the lion's share of this business this year. Yes. Start Legion now. We kind of covered that heavily, but just knowing that um, that it's going to look different yes. come October. Start your communication <laughs> now. Start working with your clients now. And then corporate alliances are going to be more important than ever. Um, key partnerships, your networking partners, because making sure because you're going to have to learn how to generate your own leads it's going to be too expensive and take too long for you to go through your normal lead ways yep. so being able to generate your own leads and having your corporate alliances to do so will be key this year and again if, if, if i'm someone sitting here looking at this i think there's two ways to approach this you can look at this as like oh my god what am i going to do to try to save my clients this mm -hmm. year or you can look at this as great i'm hearing this four, five months before mm -hmm. I'm going to be sitting down with clients. I've got a lot of time to prepare and make this a huge year to grow. Yes. So again, run those numbers, figure out how many people you can meet with. And if it's not enough, you've got five months to figure out solutions for that. And we are here to help you with all of those. If it's mm -hmm. shortening those appointments, if it's <clears throat> doing the uh, bulk meetings, like mm -hmm. we said there, if it's getting more people licensed, whatever it is, let's figure that out so that you've got the the time during your AP to see all of your clients or review in some capacity with all of your clients because they will all need a touch point and if you can figure out a way to do that and then go great i've still got you know 10% 20% 30% of my time during AEP left you will be someone who is in a great position to win because a lot of agents will not be that prepared mm -hmm. and if you can do that and have that system and be starting that lead gen those corporate alliances now you can see phenomenal return this year. Mm -hmm. I believe that so strongly that any advertisement you put out there, there is going to be so much so confusion much. in consumers that they will be running to that. And there's going to be less advertisement out there because it's going to be harder to do and it's going to be more expensive mm -hmm. and all of those things. So those who are prepared, this is a year where you could grow your business more than any year in the time that either of us have been in yeah. here. And we're hearing from people that have been around for 30 years yeah. saying this might be the, the biggest growth year they can ever have mm -hmm. but on the flip side if you approach this year like you have the last five years and just kind of stroll into it and think you'll have it covered i i fear a lot of people will lose a lot of clients this year yeah. if you're not prepared so what do you do next here's a list <laughs> number one i seen some questions okay well who do i'm i'm can new we, to ma missouri the questions are popping. lots of questions i promise <laughs> we're going to answer them um what can i be doing right now for the carrier wise talk to our um, agent outreach team because they are aware of carriers that are entering the market that yep. you may not be aware of. We have most all of those now. We know exactly. counties won't have benefits, but we will know we'll by and large who's gonna be matter. there. Right. Benefits don't matter this year. So you need to get that. So it's call us. Um, we know there are new carriers that are spreading around mm -hmm. the market. Those regional ones are becoming more and more popular and gaining more ground. Yeah. So call us, we will get you set up and tell you what carriers you guys can do now. Yes, the AHIP doesn't come out until June 24th. 24th. Yep. Um, so, but so a lot of carriers do require that you do the AHIP or NABIP. So that's a good transition there. Yes, or NABIP. So <laughs> NABIP does have their own certifications that can be depending on the state that you're on, counts for six to eight per, or six to eight credit hours on that. Yep. That is only a hundred dollars compared to the 175. You may think, Olivia, I've only paid $125. 
Well, that was whenever Curies were able to give you money to do it. And with the final ruling, doesn't look like they can. So I'm um, understanding that expect higher um, AHIP costs or- And that's if AHIP the doesn't increase. Exactly. Yeah, they just say based on last year's numbers, it could increase more. Uh, and yeah, for those of you who aren't familiar, NABIP, that's artist formerly known as NAHU or NAHU. I know that still draws yeah. blank stares a lot of times. Yeah. But. Um, but yeah, exactly. I think that's what we were talking about. That is the only carrier, the only large carrier that is currently not accepting the NABIP certification versus AHIP is Aetna. Yeah. But Aetna does have their own and does not require either. Correct. So. They get their own replacement. So exactly. Other alternatives. And then, uh, yeah, earliest you can get certified. Uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as... Uh, uh, like AHIP comes out, you can start there. And then most carrier certifications are coming out shortly thereafter. I would say by probably the second week of July, pretty much every carrier will be live for certification. So exactly. yeah, I would encourage you to jump on those then and definitely contracting. If there's any new carriers coming, pretty much every carrier, even if they're brand new to your state, a lot of those you won't be able to contract with yet. It won't be until their 2025 is out, but around that same timeline by mid July, they'll all be out there, some as early as June. So start early. One more thing I'll say on that starting early side yeah. is that the carriers are going to be overburdened with a lot of things here. Um, on the administrative side, they're prepping for, obviously that's gonna take a lot of time there, but you won't be the only agent who is trying to get contracted at the last minute. Like you can be the ones who are prepped and doing this ahead of time and starting there. Eventually this message will set in with pretty much everyone, but it may take some time to do that. If you're one of the thousands that are trying to do it in September, it's not going to happen. No. It's going to be too late and you're not going to have it at the beginning of AEP, which is every day. Every day is so going to count. Every day is going to count. So yeah. start now. If it's there, you need it. Work on shortening your AEP appointments. We are going, we're actually getting ready to film some mock appointments about what does a 30 minute Medicare Advantage mm -hmm. appointment look like. Um, so we're going to be doing some mock appointments, things like that. But look at that. Also get familiar with the technology now. So Medicare Center, a lot of those <coughs> updates that I'm talking about are coming out in June, but you can go ahead and get used to quoting and enrollment on the Medicare Center platform, yep. get used to the CRM, get used to how a lot of that looks, um, and knowing that those updates will be coming within June and July. Totally. So and get to know what you can know now. And quick shameless plug on that with Medicare Center mm -hmm. as well. If you are one, like Libby said, get in there, do it now. If you're seeing carriers you can quote but not enroll in there right now, that means that contract is not through us or an integrity partner. Yes. You also still have time to change that between now and AEP. Yeah, is your Again, other lines telling you about this <laughs> stuff? Probably not. And genuinely, like, I don't know how you will survive this year without a all-in-one enrollment platform with yes. that. I, I think it would be very difficult to do without it. So if you are not able to do that, uh, there is still plenty of time for that. Uh, the earliest deadline we have for transfers with carriers is the end of this month with mm -hmm. United Healthcare. Mm -hmm. Most of the others are going to be right around the start of July. Mm -hmm. So there's time, not a ton of time. But if you're someone who gets on there or if you already know that that contract is not aligned with us or an integrity partner, there's time to act on that and make sure you look at that now. Because again, if you wait mid-August, you start looking at it there and go, oh, hey, I want to go ahead and get that moved over. That's not on mm -hmm. there to you guys. It'll be too late and we can't move the contracts. Build your corporate alliances. Start talking to us about what we can do up until October 1st, which is our 10-app co-op. So for every 10 applications you write within a month with, you know, with senior marketing specialists, we'll co-op with you a lead source or some usually through lead center, but we will co-op with you on yep. your leads. At least so, until 10-1. Until 10-1, <laughs> right? Yeah. So get while the getting's good. Do it early. Take advantage of the opportunity that you have today. Yes. And we have a bajillion questions. And then last but not least, call us, call us, call us, call us, call us. Here's our number right here. Um, whoop. Oh. Call us. Um, talk to our agent resources team. They will make, help you with your ANOX, help you with your planning, introduce you to carrier reps so that you can have help through a lot of these things. Let's start answering some questions. <laughs> Guys, I'm not kidding. There is like probably 70 questions that have come in during this webinar too. So we're going to answer them. If I we get to the end and we didn't answer your question, then please re-ask yep. it, but only ask it once until I say, I don't think there's any more. Um, so one is, um, uh, we new, answer some of these. A new Missouri MAPD carrier. So I'm probably thinking of Devoted potentially, Christy, but if not, talk to us. Essence and Devoted are probably the two newer carriers in Missouri. Yes. Uh, Devoted um, is a great, those regional companies are wonderful because they have better relationships with providers compared to like the big ones out there. So if you have somebody that loves their providers, doesn't like, or doesn't like, like worrying with prior authorizations and things like that, 
regional carries can be a great solution for yep. them. Uh, early she can sort of answer that. Uh, opportunity to move clients to Medicare supplement. I think that's a yes. good question. I would say, I don't think so though. Uh, I don't know. It could be a potential opportunity, but keep in mind, we're also seeing med sup rates run through the roof, you know, 15, well, 20% increases. Yeah, let's, let's talk about yeah. that. So Medicare supplements are also going through a bit of a metamorphosis and overdue metamorphosis, I will add. Um, we're right now, be expecting, especially more so in 2025, but starting now, um, the Medicare supplement rate increases being an average of 15 to 20 percent, certainly double digit rate increases. Primary reason for that is one, a T65 med sup is about the same as it was in 2010, not mm -hmm. much of a change in that. So they haven't kept up with the inflation, right. but also keep in mind that the number one most costly uh, book of business or most costly demographic is a T65er and they're the lowest rated. So keep so again, Medicare supplements needed in order to stay in business and did need to go through significant rate increases. You're the way that you sell Medicare supplements will be just different. You're going to be selling Medicare supplements more so as a luxury item, a convenience yep. item, saying that it is going to cost you more because it should cost you more. You have less hassle with the Medicare supplement, uh, more of that stability, flexibility, go wherever. Yep. Yes. It's not going to be which med sup. It's going to be, you're just going to have to go back to truly selling Medicare supplements. The market's not yep. dead. It just looks different. different. And keeping in mind, those are all going to be lumped to the PDP. We just talked about how much more expensive a PDP is going to get. It will probably be pretty commonplace for that bundle to be $250, $300 a month mm -hmm. for a lot of clients, a PDP and a med sup bundle. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't see this as like a mass exodus from MA, no. I guess, is where I was going to answer that question of, yes, MA is going to look a lot different, but I don't think it's going to be all of a sudden everybody leaves because well, MedSup and PDP costs are going to be high as well. So. If you've seen a huge exit of your MedSup clients to Medicare Advantage plans because they've been like, oh, like why the MOOP is lower than my premiums for a MedSup, why does maybe. it matter? Then maybe those recent switchers may go back, oh, I don't like this, I don't like this, go back to my MedSup. But that's yeah. not that's not in the stars. Uh, not yeah, I, do, talking I don't think we're going to see a mass act. I think the MA market probably will grow faster than it has the last year or two this year, honestly, yeah. because of the PDP changes. Yeah. Um, what is the self enrollment tool? Is it URL to integrate it? So it's called Plan Enroll, Up and in Nepal. and it's it's a, called a personal <laughs> agent website. Pause. Um, <laughs> what are we doing? Paul. Um, so it's called a personal agent Hopefully website. Hopefully, someone screenshot of that. <laughs> It is, um, you already have it, to be clear. So if you're using Medicare Center, if you go to your account and it has a personal agent website, you can have that. You can start sending that out to your clients now. The cool thing about that is there are upgrades coming to the personal agent website, including being able to add a headshot, agency information, a bio, things like that to make it more like a true website. So that already exists where clients, you can send out that link today and clients can today shop and enroll themselves into a plan. The upgrades that I'm excited about is again, the way that it advertises the agency and the way that that information will feed into Medicare Center to where people can update their own profiles and you don't have to spend your appointment time loading drug lists and things like that. So it's already there. Uh... Can retire flow feed into Medicare Center or Medicare app? Today, no. Tomorrow, I don't know. There's a lot of discussions. Things that Medicare Center would have never considered previously are being reconsidered now because of how dire the situation yeah. is, because of the opportunity out there. So it is not in the plan to have retire flow feed into Medicare Center today. But nothing's off the table. Well, and a lot of the things you can do through the PAW. A lot of things you can do for the pod does satisfy a lot of yeah. the retire flow stuff. It'll look different because retire flow, you don't have to, your clients will not have to have a username and password. Yeah. It's literally like, you know, click this link, fill out the information it uploads into it, um, where the personal URL or the PAW will require them to have a username and password because yeah. they're accessing their own profiles. Jury's still out. The, the good news is you will have a solution one way or the other. Yep. It, you have a solution. Um, we can talk on a one-on-one -on -one basis, which is a better solution for you. A lot of questions kind of similar here. Bulk appointments, ANOC meetings, what those look like, when you can do them. 
answer is yes we will teach you how to conduct a knock meetings we will help you register because these are formal sales events which means they have to be registered through carriers we will get you in contact with the local carrier reps who would love to do these meetings with you even though they can't fund them anymore to be able to do these meetings with you yep. um we will give you everything you need the only thing we can't give you is the actual content of the ADOC meeting because it's plan specific exactly yeah. but everything else the how to's all of that yep. will help you and k you're correct they cannot be before 10 1. so yeah that's yes. the it, what we we're talking about earlier is it can be in the aep marketing period 10 1 to 10 14. you can have all those meetings then and then start the enrollments 10 15 and later What's the easiest way to get a knock letters? A couple, couple keep in mind, a knock letters won't actually come out until the end of September, oftentimes the last week of September. So the easiest way to get them, um, we see agents that get it first, typically have really great relationships with their carrier reps, yeah. but also um, usually towards the end or actually October 1st, uh, the carrier portals will yeah. oftentimes have copy of the a -Nog. But if you want it early, for sure, to get get with your local reps. That's not something that we can get like a mass copy no. of until they do hit the portals. Mm -hmm. So for sure, get to know your local reps with all those carriers. Mm -hmm. Nice term that I was thinking. <laughs> uh, uh, four ten one. Yep, covered that. Where do I find training on how to send clients a link on their own? That so that's coming out, Michelle. Um, how where can I find how to send clients their own links and things like that today, Michelle? All you have to do in order to get your own personal agent website, which is, get, is going to look different here in the next couple months. But today, just go to your go to integrity.com, click on login, log in using your national, your individual national producer number. And then if you haven't used Medicare Center in the past, create a login, yada, 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 but login, go to your account, click on, um, click on your, go to your name, click on account, and it'll say personal agent website copy and paste that link. Now, Plan and Roll also has a million and a half things that they are doing to help you with lead generation for free. I don't have time today to talk about it, but it's in your best interest to be utilizing your Plan and Roll site. Uh, Christy Deal says call centers are biggest competitors. Christy, I agree in some way, but I also would say a lot of these changes are designed to really clean up some of those bad actors. Yes. The one-to-one -one consent rule is really aimed at a lot of those because a lot of these places are buying huge volumes of overseas generated leads that are going to be incredibly more expensive and aren't going to aren't going to be able to be these bait and switch yeah. generic ads. Yeah. Uh, they are, will again all have to advertise the name of the agency that will be reaching out to them, potentially the name of the exact agent that's yeah. reaching out. So it'll really limit a lot of things there. Also, a ton of these are getting massive per app money from carriers right now that we now know also will not be able to be funneled to them, at least not in the same way. So yeah. I don't want to say that like it's a huge, you know, nothing they're going to be gone, but like these are changes to try to clean up some yeah. of the bad actors. And we, you know, we just saw a major call center close its doors after all these changes were rolled out just a couple of weeks ago. But keep in mind, the majority of leads that call centers get are actually generated inbound leads. Right. So like, again, a lot of this stuff, um, and, and what that tells me is that if you are communicating, <laughs> what inbound leads is that the consumer is calling the call center, Correct. not the call center calling them, the consumers are calling these 1-800 numbers. So what that tells me is, yes, Christy, your, your uh, call centers are always gonna be a concern, but you can stop a lot of that by com constant, consistent communication and educating your clients that you are the solution. It doesn't matter. And you can do a lot of that now. Host client appreciation events, um, host educational seminars, host marketing events now that has nothing to do with what's going on this AEP so that you're the obvious choice. You are the obvious person who solves their problem. So if you don't want your clients calling into 800 numbers, show that you're still the solution today. Uh, yep, and it looks like we answered this one for Mary. Yeah, mm -hmm. NABIP will work with all the national carriers except for Aetna. I don't want to say every mm -hmm. carrier, but like your your kind of core carriers, everybody but Aetna. Um, but again, Aetna has their own replacement course for it in place of AHIP. Anywho, so you could still do that if you want to save some money and get CE credits in the process. If not, just do a hip like you always have. Yes. Um, Mary, no, we're not adding Blue Cross. Senior Marketing Specialist does not have a contract and is not planning on picking up a contract with Blue Cross of Illinois, but we have a lot of partners and friends. Mary, I think you would direct with them, yep. um, but we do have a lot of uh, friends and, and partners that do hold that contract. We just do not. And therefore, you could get it on Medicare Center if that was the case. If, if you, if you, if you get that. it through, um, through play, an integrity person, yep. you can get it through We Medicare. can play matchmaker for mm -hmm. you. Custom Medsteps will take a second increase in 2024. 
I suppose it's possible, although Anything most possible. carriers have 12 month. Uh, I don't want to say every, but most carriers have 12 month rate locks these days. We, well, no, no, no. 12 month rate locks from the time you apply for it. Most of them also have the like general administrative policy listed on there that they won't do one more than like that a client will I not have, get more than one increase, but it's not all. It's so, not all. I have possible. seen a couple do it. Yep. It's not off the docket. It just would be not. It's a very bad all. PR move, though. Yes. So I feel like carriers try to avoid that at all yes. costs because they get i mean people still talk about mutuals plan in from 15 years ago so uh scott great question so can we talk about how this is going to be the biggest change because of the new law and the out-of-pocket meds for 2025 going into two thousand dollars here's where things get a little tricky so the ira the inflation reduction act is a public thing yep. you can talk about it with anything what you i don't recommend talking about is the implications it will have on the carriers because then you're talking about 2025 plan benefits, plan premiums, things like that prior to October 1. So what you can say is that we're expecting a ton of disruption. We're expecting that you're going to have a lot of questions. Let's set up, a, you can start setting up. We will need now. a meeting. I think we that's will need the a way you can yes. tell them. Yes, you, we will need a meeting, but just, and you can talk about the IRA, but you cannot talk about its impact on carriers. You can't cover what we just did. Exactly. For sure. This is for you. Yeah, this is but, but, but to that point, I think it is very okay to tell your clients, we're expecting to see a lot of changes this year. So mm -hmm. we're gonna need to have an appointment, schedule those now. We, like I said, the event we just got back from, we had three or four agents that are saying like, we are already have booked a significant number of AEP yeah. appointments now. Start scheduling, <laughs> um, get those ANOC meetings on the book and start um, get, get them on the book and get them scheduled. Yeah. Like find places that will do them, start doing events between now and then with those places, but like get those scheduled now. I have sure. so many clients that say they don't receive their ANOC, but no, but they just don't look at their mail possibly. I send out mass emails reminding them, however. So, yeah. okay, like for sure. We also will have content for your social media, the things like videos that you can use that say like, be on the look, you should be receiving your ANOC. Here's how to read them. So utilizing your social media, use a like we will be sending you compliant pieces to talk to your clients about, especially the AEP newsletter we do every year. That was gonna have a lot of details yeah. about this. So if you're not using our resources, now's the time. Yep. Uh, uh planner roll question. Does the information <laughs> on the client input into planner roll feed over into Medicare app? Judy, great question, not Medicare app. Only Medicare um, Center. Right? Only Medicare Center. So Medicare, long story short, Medicare Center, if you're utilizing Medicare app, there's going to be a lot of reasons to transition into Medicare Center. All the tools and resources that Integrity is putting into the platform, it's going into Med Center, not Med App. So keep that in mind. Agent, uh, using the agent link, I need to carve out the carriers. I don't want the clients to see to enroll. Is that an option? So Christina, the only carriers that will show up in your paw are going to be carriers that you have through an integrity partner so if you don't want clients to be able to see um some no-name regional carrier it's not going to show up there if you're not ready to sell for it also something really cool that the paw does it already has the disclaimer built into it to say you can represent 68 plans out of the 142 available so that disclaimer you now have to say it pre-calculates it for you and also <laughs> includes it on the paw uh and turn Not off yet, life, fighting. turn off agent search on the link oh okay christina yes yeah, so that is an option right now on the personal url you do have the ability we'll talk about it right now it does represent both life insurance and medicare advantage plans um i don't recommend turning it off because if you turn it that does have the capability to turn off life insurance but it doesn't get rid of the button so if you turn off life insurance and they click that button they want to talk about it it will go to an agent local that represents life insurance so leave it on because at least you'll get the call about it even if you don't represent it you're still a part of the process uh, we'll still be able to do hras nope nope <laughs> that is because of the final ruling um hras again that is a per app additional payment nothing which above is, fair market value is nothing above says. so um so i'm sure there so there's like conversation about what our carriers going to do with hras because carriers like need that information 
Um, so there is conversation about like how will carriers still get that and what will incentivizing that look like? It will not be money. It will not be anything about monetary value. Which by the way, brought me to the thing I couldn't think of earlier was risk adjustments was the word I was trying risk to think of that MA carriers can get more money when they do the risk adjustments, which See, is I why they do, you. I don't know that term. that's why they do the HRAs because when they can get risk adjustments for people having certain conditions, they get more money. Yes. That's why they do those. So we send out an email them. or a mailer to the clients we have now just saying we are expecting big changes. Get your appointments made now for after 2020 or in 2024. Can we do that? I'm going to defer to sending that to Chalen, our compliance officer, to be 100% certain of. I, I, The part that gets me is like major big changes. Big changes, yeah. That might be one of those superlatives they don't like. Yeah. We'll get back to you on that, Margaret. Yeah. Um, Chay, We want to talk to Chalen at compliance. Yeah. Or maybe like, you know, keeping it to just the facts of like, you know, you will need to review your plan changes this year, get the schedule. Like, I feel like maybe that would be more in line. But again, that's what we have a compliance officer for and what we have. We're HPMS in sales. For. I'm, 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 I'm always like, yeah, yeah, it's do fine. It. Just say everything. Make, yeah. That's not the actual advice, though. Don't do that. Correct. Um, I have a numerous clients not on social media. They, so they need to read emails. 100% yeah. K. Um, yep. Emails, yep. call campaigns, advertisements, all the things. Can I ask a regional carrier to contract with SMS? You can. Uh, I mean, I would say just talk to, maybe talk to us though, because in a lot of cases, it just doesn't make sense for us to have every single regional carrier across the country, but we can usually put you in touch with a partner of ours who would have that contract mm -hmm. so that again, you could still have it on Medicare Center, plan and roll, all mm -hmm. of those things. Um, you know, and, and our staff would still be able to help you with everything else. But Terry, if you've got a specific one, shoot us an email. Ask for forgiveness instead of permission would be a big no-no. Margaret, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Now, when it comes to the FCC, don't do that. Uh, when it comes to, again, the lead generation rules, there is no forgiveness. There is money that you pay. Um, so don't do it on that. Don't do it on anything is the official advice of SMS. Be careful. Wait to hear. Head fast. Wait to hear from Chaylin on how that works. Yes. Um, send it to us. Send it to us. Send a compliance us. email. Send it, there. Just send it to us. And then we'll tell you yes or no. Or if we tell you no, we'll say, but if you change this, you'll be fine. Here's what you should do. Yes. Yes. My questions are still rolling. <laughs> this is Sue. My alias is Margaret. Here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Sue. Okay. Well, that's how you showed up. Margaret. Well, you're Margaret to me. I'm going to call you Marge. Sue, can I call you Marge? <laughs> All okay. right. That is No okay. more questions at the moment. If I did not, if myself or Carson did not answer your questions, it means we did yeah. not see it. <laughs> Please. We were scrolling a lot. We like I'm telling you, it is a ton of questions. Please ask whatever questions that you have left that we haven't answered. I did see one question earlier. Is like, what's going to help into the well care zero dollar plan or the fifty cent plan? <laughs> it's going to be sold as an MA lead. That's what's going to happen to it. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have said that. We didn't say it. <laughs> oh shoot, it's recorded. Well, yeah, yeah it's what's happening. Um, there. The companies are not willing to lose money because out of the goodness of their hearts on this stuff. So if they're losing it's a money, loss leader. Yeah. if it's yeah, it's it's they're looking for lead generation. Keep current Sigma PDP and MA plans can't recertify to keep. The, I don't understand the question. Sorry. Christy uh, was asking to keep current Sigma PDP and MA plans can't recertify the business or how will that work? I don't know that I follow your question. Sorry, Thanks, Tim. I didn't follow that one. Uh, if you want to rephrase, we can hang on a sec or um, feel, again, feel free to just give us a call. Thank you, Tim. Um, are they selling the book? Um, all I can say is, oh, are you talking about oh, Cigna? Oh, because Cigna has been acquired by HC, HCSE. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe all, all the guidance we've gotten so far is that nothing will change from like an administrative standpoint right now. Like your contract will still stay Cigna. For the time being, mm -hmm. everything will look the same as it has in past years. Potentially next year, we'll see you know integration of systems with HCSE, if that's what you're referring to. Yes. So to keep your current policies, yeah, just keep certifying like you would with Cigna. Um, Robin saying, Robin, I've not seen another person spell their name like that. Robin's my middle name, and I spell it that way too. Um, the bad thing is when PDP plans want to us to sell their plans but not pay its commission. Oh, yeah. I don't know how we didn't. I didn't, I didn't I hear us say that. Did you? Okay. I, I just talked about how plans, um, yeah, how a lot a of lot PDPs are likely to not look pay. at not paying commissions. Yeah. And again, the thing is, is that PDPs, I kind of hit on it earlier, but PDPs, it's it's really difficult. I cannot imagine a world in where I say agents stop selling PDPs because 
the profitability of them is not commissions. It's retention, it's referrals, it's finding more premium, it's saving the money, it's it's value add. So taking yourself, what I always say is taking yourself out of the PDP equation is like going to a dentist that's not willing to clean your teeth. Like it's a huge part of the portion of why you go to the dentist. If they're not willing to do it, they're not making money off teeth cleanings. Good, good analogy. They're not making money off teeth cleanings, but it gets you in there and it's a service that you expect. If you start going to somebody who only does the root canals, the cavity fillings and things like that, you're going to want to continue to go to somebody who takes care of you holistically. Hmm. Yes. Um, other question, yeah, on the well care PDP role in MA. Uh, what we were saying on that is that well care is sending out, and all carriers do this, a lot of, mm -hmm. lot of them do this with PDPs, they will send out PDP only clients as leads to agents to that be able to talk to year. as MA. That's not new to this. That's, that's not year. new. That's a lot of, Humana did it for a ton of years. WellCare just did a lot of it last year with that zero premium PDP in particular. And knowing what we know about the benefits this year, the likelihood of having anywhere near a zero premium this year mm -hmm. is very, very slim. Um, so yeah, they, they, they probably will either be moving up in premium or moving over to yeah. something different. Marjorie says, it's a lot, a little fast and furious for us. Could you maybe send out the slides or, or maybe, you know, make it a little bit more, I'll, I'll use the words, make it more palatable to understand. Cause it is, um, I said an hour and it's been an hour and 15 minutes and we're still rolling strong. Um, so we are, we have put out a lot of content on this so far. This is by far the first like really in-depth thing we've done. Yeah. Go to our website or go to our YouTube page, SMS uh, Senior Marketing Specialist on YouTube. I did a video last week talking about three major changes that hits on this, just not as deep. And then Medicare Cafe. Uh, Medicare Cafe is also a YouTube channel. Go to that. I've done a few episodes now about what AEP is going to look like yep. coming into. And this will be recorded. So this will be uh, being sent out as well. And I also know that between now and AEP, again, just keep following all those places. Yes. There will be constant content on this uh, between now and then. We'll do both white papers. Um, so content that you can download and like read and then also more video yep. formats. Cons, we're going to be coming out with content for you to share with your networking partners content for you to share with your clients like we are when i tell you we are on all cylinders trying to make sure that you guys can focus on money making activities and let us help handle the admin stuff it's it's our yep. it's our focus we for like right now it might as well be september first the way that we're totally. treating aep right now and we know it was a lot like sorry we tried to warn that at the beginning like it was a lot of content yeah. to pack in and we'd be going quick so Hopefully everybody got some good notes at least. And if not, you can watch the, the recording and pause and take your notes. We'll go from there, making yep. sure. Um, I, I assumed I was going to get some text messages about this. Um, yes, uh, Eric, I hate to call you out, but because you're texting me, because you're a Medicare cafe. Says, um, <laughs> I'm using Medicare app currently. Is there tutorials for Medicare Center? Go to our um, website, go to the events page. We are seeing Integrity Anna Patrick, who has to be one of my favorite humans, is doing weekly webinars on Medicare Center, Lead Center, all the technology. CSG is doing weekly webinars on how to use those. But if you ever want a one-on-one -on -one tutorial, just call our office. We'll give you the full walkthrough. And I think we have gotten through all of them. Just getting a couple of thank yous now. You're welcome. Thank you guys. Okay. Okay. It's fine. We're fine. This is fine. It will be tons of opportunity just for those who are say. prepared. <laughs> just just follow that's, our lead. That's the takeaway. Be prepared and you can kick ass and win a bunch this AP. That's very true. Awesome. All right, guys. We will continue <laughs> to work tirelessly for you to help you. We are here for you. You are not at this alone. We are your support. For the love of all that is good, please lean on us because it is a true partnership. Yes. We only succeed if you succeed. All right, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. Don't lose sleep. We're here for you. Thanks, guys.